It's the final act of the regular season, and the road to the PBR Teams Championship runs right through Fort Worth. Before the curtain comes down in Cowtown, the eight teams of the PBR Camping World Team Series will take center stage to make one final statement. This is Rattler Days from Dickey's Arena, stop number 10 in the final homestand of 2023. As we take a look at the Las Vegas team standings, it is Austin and Kansas City in those crucial number one and two spots. Top two teams when we get to Las Vegas get a bye. Could be a huge advantage in a sport as physical as this. As we welcome you up to our track and supply desk, Alongside Scott Schiffner, I'm Kate Harrison. Matt West, Brennan Clark will be joining us as well. When you look at rivalries, when you look at bull riding, it is new, but here we are, home field advantage and opportunity later tonight for Texas and Oklahoma to do something big. And Cooper comes alive for the Cowboys, ride him for 20. Carolina's on the board. They are, and, I, and I'll say it again about Cooper Davis. He's one of the bull riders that always amazes me about how aware he is of his body position. He has a magical ability to just shift and move his weight exactly where he needs it. But with that being said, I think this was a really good ride. But as you can tell, can Cooper Davis ride bulls that buck harder than this? Absolutely. He was awarded 88 and a half for the effort, so good score to get on the board and force Missouri to get a big one or a couple rides. 88 and a half points to get the momentum. We're here with his teammate, Sage Kimsey. Sage, what do you think of Coop's ride to start you guys off? Oh, just excellent. I mean, Coop's been our anchor. He's been our rock all year long. We put him in that number one spot, get some points on the board, get the momentum rolling for us. Got the momentum in Carolina's favor. Now Missouri backed into a corner, guys. Did him to get another big one right now. Oh, that was going to be good. How many times have you said that in your career? Way too many than I want to remember. I feel like every bull rider probably could go back and think, man, that was going to be good. Yeah, but what was good in that instance was the great job the bullfighters did. Watch Cody Webster when he steps in there and just takes total control. These guys are looking uh, picture perfect so far. U.S. Border Patrol safety team. Watch this. You see Cody Webster starting to move in from the left side. And he just steps over. Trey Kimsey and stays right there with him. So Trey's got an opportunity to move while those other two guys, you see Nathan Harp step in there, take that bull's attention away. Guys have looked good so far tonight. And the veteran, oh, backs it up with another. Looks like he may have taken a shot. Good to see him on his feet. Carolina gets another one on the board in this one on a high note. We really do, and we hope Trevor's all right. He yes. definitely took a shot here, but Trevor has been impressing me so much right here and the fact of how he's been stepping up and they've been putting him in pressure situations and they're gonna they're gonna challenge this right now and just look for a slap and, and it doesn't matter for the keep game, going. but it sure does oh, matter for Trevor to there. keep that momentum going because he has been riding outstanding. First ride of the season came back that's in Austin ride, week five. That's a marking. Back in the lineup for a ride in Glendale last week. Kicks it off here in Fort Worth with another one. You love the ride, you do not love the aftermath and the shot that came with this one. 88 and three quarters awarded for the effort. So best ride score we saw this game. Take a look at this. No, thank you. You know that. That is a bad hit right there, but it could have always been worse. It can always be worse in bull riding, and I know Trevor's been in situations like this before, and I'll guarantee you he's going to say, oh, it wasn't as bad as it looked. So after five losses, the Cowboys snap it and put a win on the board. Count on, that's why he's in that number five spot. He's done it for him before. Great opportunity here. Out to the in outside, rather, from that first jump out of the gate. Jack Middles hard way. Spinning out there with U.S. Border Patrol protection team, ultimately heading back to the trailer, and Missouri heading back to the locker room. And I'm actually quite amazed right here that that Luke or Luke or Ross didn't throw a flag. That bull just kind of left there a little funny, and I'm not saying it's a re-ride, but when they have that challenge flag left, 
why not use it to have the opportunity of maybe getting another one? And with that buck off, Carolina takes the win. Cowboys back in the win column, Missouri. Now it's in the double digits. The amount of times they've been shut out this season. Nine and 87. And make it three in a row for Tets. Canadian champ showing you just why he's become Arizona's leading man and the Ridge Riders, they roll first. Nick Tetz, Kobe Yates loves this guy. Last weekend after he was so dominant, Kobe come up to me and he says, boy do I love Canada, and rightfully so, because Nick is just, every time they put him in these situations, he's just answering the bell and he's getting big scores, and what a start for the Ridge Riders right here. 89 and three quarters and with that ride Tets enters the double digits that is his 10th qualified ride of the season and matches a team high with Vitor Losnacki who is still to nod Shoo, buddy. <laughs> you better not look past Batista Second week with the Outlaws, second week getting on the board, Kansas City strikes. You know, this is a really good example of when we talk about Buck and Bulls moving forward. Right here, this bull just turns back now. Right here, he just really moves forward. And what that does is create all your body weight to want to go back. And he does such an outstanding job to compensate that right there. J.W. Hart, Guilherme Marchi leading the way for this crew and what a job they've done they are the most improved team in the league by the numbers from 2022 to 2023 but when a guy is riding with some momentum you've got to put the, the you know the, the ball in his court and let him show everyone he's there to do it bob best moonlight party First time with the Bulls way, second it did too, but this time around, it's Bob Mitchell town. It is, and the thing that we don't know, just like Brendan was just talking about, is he got that one ride last week, but how many Bulls did he go this week and get on, and the coaching staff watched him and seen that he turned the corner, and he obviously did, because this is a Bull that a lot of guys don't get along with. You can see him right here just kind of throwing a fit at the end, not like getting rode, and he just makes a really good ride, and the momentum is really rolling now. I tell you what, every Kansas City member is here watching him ride. Diaz is dialed in. Goes for a spin. But now let the celebration begin. We've talked the last few weeks about how much that groin has been bothering him. And then he steps up and does this week after week after week. Looks like he's feeling pretty good, guys. 86 and three quarters awarded for the effort. Not only does that put Arizona in a must-ride situation, but for Diaz, he is trailing Jose Vitor Lemmy by just two qualified rides coming into Fort Worth. Now, he is 83 and a half points behind Lemmy in that MVP race on the season. And that's what I was gonna say. This isn't the biggest score we've seen him get, but the thing I wanna say about this is this bull wasn't as easy as he made him look. We asked Brendan too. Brendan, you see now you're sliding forward in that, and I was talking about bulls that actually move forward. This bull's pushing back and wanting to pull him over his head. Yeah, and Matt was talking about having some issues with his groins. That one there was really going to test that. But that, uh, like I said, that was a no-brainer. Cassio Diaz probably, you know, nine times out of ten could close, close his eyes and ride that one. But great job. The whole, what I like to point out, the whole entire coaching staff, every rider, the fitness trainer, both coaches, everyone was up on the shoots pulling for him. And this team right here, if you look at a team that really wants it, the Kansas City Outlaws are really showing that here tonight. Put him on one that you've just got to track and let him find his way through. Oh, hung up and underneath. Good to see Whitehorse get away from Thunderstruck, but does not leave unscathed. Comes up just a second short and feeling the effects of that one.
And guys, that's going to happen purely because of the effort that Keyshawn Whitehorse put out. He knew how important this moment was for his team, and you've got to commend the guy for the effort and the heart that he just displayed. You're exactly right, Matt. He's just making a really good ride and gets in trouble here, but as you can see, he never, ever let go. He was putting forth the effort every time. And one thing I'll say all the time is the more try and determination you have, it'll pay dividends versus just sheer talent with no try or effort. So with that buck off, there's implications and unravel. Outlaw outlast again. Does not get better than that for Outlaw Nation and Nashville is on the board. And for Nashville, this is a great thing. For the other teams, this could get scary because this is the last guy you want to catch fire before going into Vegas because what this guy can do when he is wired just right and his momentum is set perfectly, that's a guy that can put big numbers on the board. Chase Outlaw putting big numbers on the board, but he's putting a lot of energy in the locker room. You got to love what this guy's bringing to the Stampede. Yeah, Outlaw wakes up with a lot of energy. I mean, it's if he's awake, it's high energy, man. It's spreading through the locker room. He is fired up, and you guys are on the board. Great job. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Fired up, light a spark, on fire. I'm catching what you two are throwing right here. And they are building quite the bond between veteran and young gun. And Mason's starting to show a lot of energy, just like Chase. Too tall is not too much for Mason Moody. He's there for the eight and gets Nashville another ride. Picked up his first qualified ride his PBR team season debut weekend back in Ridgedale. Now finds it here again in Fort Worth. <laughs> Nashville has kind of stitched together their lineup here, and I'll talk more about that in a little bit. Right now, let's talk about a great ride. Mason Moody stepping in there, and much to the delight of all of his team. We've seen Justin McBride smile more in the last few minutes than we have most of the season. He's got a couple of big scores on the board. Outlaw Mason Moody looking good here tonight. By the way, that bull that he got his first PBR team's qualified ride on, it was that one, too tall. And we're putting you in the lineup, and here he is. Aboard Ivy League. Come on, Caden! the bull that's delivered the best score we've seen all season. Here comes the 18-year-old in Nashville is three for three on a Friday night. How is it exciting is it to watch an 18-year-old like this in this position step up and it goes back to the leaders of the team starting with Chase Outlaw and then to Mason and they're just following suit just nobody wants to let the team down and Nashville is actually looking like a team. Quickly, Sports Med will make their way to Lemmy. You saw the contact, you could hear it here inside Dickey's Arena. You know, it's just, you can hear a pin drop in here because everybody is very concerned. And the cheers start as Sports Medicine takes Lemmy off on the backboard. We will do the very best we can to keep you updated. Everyone on the Nashville sideline said a prayer, and then Justin McBride was in Silvano's ear. Five hundred. The clock says eight. If it stands, that is the sweet success of five hundred career rides. 
but it's not going to come without some drama. It is under review. Of course it's under review. Anytime something this special happens, they have to review it. They don't have to, but they're going to just so it makes me a little bit more nervous. I've been waiting for this. It's true religion, the bull, that gives him the memorable ride of 500. Silvano just heard the sweet sound of the eight-second whistle for the 500th time. The three-time world champ makes history. Just the fourth rider ever to do it. How impressive is that? Just time and time again. To, for a lot of guys, just to put their hand in the rope 500 times, let alone hear the eight-second whistle that many times, that's incredible. A celebration every rider starts their career hoping for, but one few will ever understand the moment of. Let's go to Matt. We are in the middle of a very historic moment in the life and the career of Silvano Alves and in the history of professional bull riding. I want to welcome the CEO of the PBR, Mr. Sean Gleason. Sean, what an incredible moment. What an incredible champion this guy has been. You know, I love this man. I've told him that many times. He's a three-time PBR world champion. The only guy that's won a back-to-back, -back, and now he's one of four guys in the PBR that has made 500 rides for us. And every one of them, blood, sweat, and tears. He's a PBR blue blood, and I love this man. The fans love Silvano Alves as well. We're going to make that presentation. A beautiful Montana silversmith. As we said, only the fourth one that says 500 qualified rides. We talk about the resume, the three world titles, the team's championship, and now another historical milestone in your career. To be here with your team on the back of the buck and shoots, your family in attendance, can you put into words how special this moment is, Silvano? Yes, it's hard for so, say some words, but God prepared me. Thank God, God and Jesus Christ first. And uh, thank PBR, thank all my fans. I'm so grateful for all the, my parents, all my fans, all the PBR are doing for me. Thank you, Nashville Stampede, <laughs> trusting my job, ride booth. Thank you, everybody, come here. I need to just ride my booth for show you guys. Thank you, appreciate it. Thank you, God, do everything in my, my life. On behalf of every bull riding fan around the world, congratulations, and thank you for 500. Good luck to many more. Thank you, thank you everybody, enjoy the show tonight. The storied 15-year professional career of Silvano just added a cherry on top and he's not done yet. Career ride number 500 with his entire family here in attendance to watch. It is, of course, our Kubota ride of the night. And by the way, that was the fourth ride of the night for the Stampede, the first time all season they've posted four. That's right. They just stepped up. The team is really coming together, but let's not take away from this. 500 rides. I just can't emphasize enough how absolutely impressive that is on a storybook career that is not done yet. So much to celebrate for the Stampede and Silvano Alves becoming just the fourth to ever do it. Galermi Marchi, JB Mooney, Mike Lee, and now Silvano Alves on the 500 career ride list. What a list. He's got his mama here watching Fiona cheering him on in the stands. Keep riding! Keep riding! Murray! Murray! Keep riding! Be ready! Make it eight for Mama Fielder finds the whistle, and the home team is on the board. Brady Fielder does such a great job of drawing his knees up. And by what I mean by that is he's a very long-legged guy. And when he rides bulls that are a little smaller than that, he can't get a hold with his feet with them long legs. So if you watch here, he just keeps drawing those knees up 
and that and what it does is it gives them stability and when them bulls move every no matter which direction they go they just turn back into that knee and that pulls him around there and he does an excellent job of it half the score comes from the rider half from the bull 100 would be perfect 87 awarded here and that is a score rider will take any day guy that's usually in the closer spot they moved him up in the lineup this is a rematch And immediately his teammates go into their coach and saying that there was a foul at the beginning of that ride. And you could see that red flag down on the arena floor to indicate that our officials saw the exact same thing. So it will be a re-ride opportunity. Unfortunately for the Rattlers, you can see Daniel Keeping is still down and obviously slow to get up. Watching it back right here, he takes a couple of shots on the way down. Yeah, when bulls like that, what we call hip themselves like that, it totally changes the momentum of the buck and bull and how they feel. And as you see him get pulled over the front, it's a direct cause from that bull hipping himself. And now you can see keeping being helped out of the arena by sports medicine. A look back at that left leg still hung up in the rope, and that now puts the leg, the ankle, the foot all in a vulnerable position. That's yep. exactly right. It just moved and twisted in a in a way that a human body is not supposed to. Well, the good news is Texas has talked about their consistency and their depth. They're going with Brady Randolph on their next opportunity. And he's got enough for a track his play shoot clock counts to zero. There it is. Oh, a slap early and he goes flying. Hunter hightailing it out of there as the U.S. Border Patrol Protection Team goes to work. And for Coach Cord McCoy and company, still searching here. That buck off time is under two. I have a feeling Grayson Cole does not agree with you about the cuteness of this animal athlete right now. <laughs> Take a look not at that now. past Pro Shops replay there. And you see that, unfortunately, Grayson Cole coming up against a great animal athlete. We talk about, you know, these bulls. They are half of the equation. Half of the score comes from the performance of these Bulls, and unfortunately for young Grayson Cole, he feels the effects of the big leagues. Cody Lambert's hoping that his Rattlers can get on the board with a 90 plus. Tell them all about it. Sports fans, meet Trace Red. The Rattlers strike it home. This young teenage talent has quickly become a force to be reckoned with this season. He's also become a vital part of this Texas Rattlers organization. Everyone on this squad so fired up when he nods his head. They are feeding off of the adrenaline of this young teenager, and everything is looking to be moving in the right direction. Coach Cody Lambert told me very few ever in the history of PBR at 18 years old have been able to come to this level and perform the way he has. And he is doing it so far with this bull right here. How good a ride that was. And Trace rides so good with the bull spinning into his hand. But what's so impressive about this ride is when that bull went back the other way, he just picked him up like we said and seen where he was going and no problem. That's really incredible. comes down quickly and you have to think the effects of slamming into that steel were still lingering when he was naughty we've not seen anything rattle this young man at all this season and there you see the yellow flag down on the arena floor which means the coaches for Oklahoma are going to challenge this one okay right here let's go nice and slow Okay, back that. Give me the count. Give me the uh, one over there. So the judges saw enough to send us to right official there. review before that challenge flag. No, I don't have a foul. It's a no score. No foul. Five attempts. Five times the freedom falls short and are unable to find the whistle. How quickly the tides can turn. Can he back it up here? Spooky is the ball. Keep running! How 
How about Jesus? It's another for the home team. That has been the expectations of Cody Jesus his entire career. We talk about the injuries, they have kept him sidelined, but when he's in competition, that's exactly what's expected of Cody Jesus. As we take a look back on the Las Vegas jib cam, Cody Lambert has to be so satisfied with the production of Jesus and his entire team as we're just two weeks away from championship weekend. You do, and the thing that I talk about with this team all the time is they just quietly go about it and just ride bulls, but they're actually not going about it that quiet with an 89 and a half on a board, 87, now an 86 and a half, and they've still got one rider to go. They can ride four bulls out of five with big scores. That's actually not being that quiet anymore. They're trying to make a statement. Dominant figure in this Carolina lineup. He's against Smooth Rumble. And Campbell can take a deep breath and a sigh of relief as our U.S. Border Patrol safety team moves into play. And that is a big ride for Boudreau Campbell. We highlighted last night as you see him look to the skies and, and signify everything that he's been through over the last week and a half. We know that the tragic accident where he lost his girlfriend just a few short days ago. And now to see a smile on his face. You can see that one meant a lot to him. That did mean a lot. And, and what impressed me about this is, is Boudreaux in some of these past few weeks, I feel he's been getting a little tight, maybe hasn't been on the bulls that totally suit his style. But what I liked about yes, this ride a, is he a, just moved. He just moved, loosened up right. in that. And as you can tell, it went under review, but he's getting a score. Okay. Yeah, either way, ride. it's a qualified ride for Boudreaux Camel. Probably not going to be the highest score we see here tonight. but. It is the emotion that comes with this score. And there's a good look at Tiffany Davis. Their entire team wearing the Sydney stickers just in recognition of all the trials and tribulations that this team and this family have been through. And we've all been in those moments. And, and to be able to put a period on that and to really showcase what it's all about. 84 and a half there for Boudreaux Campbell as we move over to the other side. Here's Chase. Outlaw taking a shot on his way down and still trying to get out of harm's way. Guys down here, uh, Chase Outlaws, you can hear yeah, we can, the we can, agony. We can hear the pain coming through the entire arena right now as Outlaw in excruciating pain. and. and if you know anything about this sport, you know that Chase Outlaw is not one that doesn't have a high pain threshold. And so to hear him in agony like that is well, we need to know if we get a score or not. certainly a scary so moment. The and the business continues here as you see Coach Justin they McBride. Don't have an extra rider. Did, he, did he make the whistle? That's what we've okay. got to know. The absolute best sports medicine team in the business. Assisting Outlaw out of the arena. And for those of you that are watching at home, you have probably been witness to some of the things that Chase Outlaw has endured over the course of his career. And this, no different. You go back to his horrendous wreck in Cheyenne, Wyoming, and the multiple hours in surgery and then to come back a year later and win that exact same event in the words of chase outlaw no step for a high stepper and so we'll hope that he will be making those steps in the right direction very very soon but take a look at a nashville stampede lineup that continues to deal with injuries that has kind of been the course all season long that has been for nashville they've been struggling so so bad with injuries they've got an incredible lineup of riders but just people keep getting injured and now it's really starting to show mcbride said what they did last night that's an everyday thing for nashville
And age is just a number. Caden Loud is coming in clutch for Nashville. And the 18-year-old gets it done again. When you're only 18 years old and you have somebody like Justin McBride that's coaching you and believing in you, you can move mountains like you said earlier, Matt. It's one of them things that all you need to do is believe and you have somebody else that believes in you. It's amazing what you can do. Take a look at this. Back-to-back -back eight second rides this weekend. Another big one away from his hand. Justin McBride loving what he's seeing from the teenager. So is everybody else. The score, 88 points and Nashville takes the lead away from the Carolina Cowboys. It is one to one and the Stampede holding on. Sliding up with three seconds remaining on that Tractor Supply Company shoot clock. Here's Silvano. Write it down. It is 5-0-1 for Alves. Silvano. Rides Bubba G for the third time in his career. Yeah, and guys, down here behind the chutes, and not only is he making this crowd happy and, and follow what he's doing, but this entire organization of Nashville Stampede is on their feet as well. There's clapping, cheering, and he's bringing motivation to this entire team. Not only is, that, is he at 501, but he continues to just lead the way and lead by example for this, uh, for this Nashville team. You know what else he does? He helps his team move to 2-0 on the weekend, and now the Nashville Stampede starting to hit full stride at the end of the regular season. And we can't forget, they just won this game, offered a re-ride, which they couldn't take. So realistically, they won this only with four riders, not five. Talk about playing the cards you're dealt. Justin McBride has done that to perfection this weekend. The matchups have certainly been right on the money. It's not near as fun as it sounds, guys. This bull's unridden. Grayson Cole down. You see Cody Webster, Lucas Teodoro, Nathan Harp doing a fantastic job as always. Our U.S. Border Patrol bullfighters coming in clutch yet again there for Grayson Cole. We talked about Kate Harrison not being on the broadcast. Very similar in the coaching style from our coaching team behind the scenes to a lot of these teams. They're putting we're putting our MVP and our starter on the bench tonight to give her a little rest to come in Sunday and save the day. I mean, it's only right. She's our closer. Without a doubt, our MVP. A much deserved night of rest in hair and makeup or wherever she's at, probably in a salon somewhere, being well taken care of, as she should be. There's a good look of the guys that are taking care of the best bull riders in the world. Cody Webster, take a look at that face. Lucas Teodoro and Nathan Harb. It's going to be different. And just when you think you've got it figured out and you can ride one, but look Clock at this. Clock is down to zero. You saw that tractor supply company shoot clock ticking down as we were talking about Circada. And either way you slice it, Disqualification, zero, it both ends up with the same result. It does, and, and this is where, because I very much have an opinion on this, but this is where I'd like to ask Brendan on this, because your shoot procedure is so important to start your ride off, but when all of a sudden you're rushed due to your own fault of taking too much time, it totally changes the dynamic of the ride. Machado once again coming in a huge way for Arizona and Machado gets his Ridge Riders on the board and at this point he had to be sitting in the shoot and just looking at it like I'm the starter this is the beginning of the game because leading up to this point 
when both teams have bucked off everything, it's a fresh start. So all of a sudden now this game turns into a two-header for each team, not a five-header. And that's how he looked at it and got a score. So now we go to a business decision because they're getting the option of a re-ride, but they're also getting a score. So do they keep the 76 and a quarter? And you see Paulo Krimber immediately talking to Colby Yates saying, let's keep that one. So 76 and a quarter will get Arizona the lead for now. Will it be enough? When you only need a 76 and a half, this is the last guy you want to nod. For this exact reason. Game, set, match, victory. Oklahoma and it only took eight seconds from Caden Bunch to what will for sure be the victory here and Corden McCoy with a big smile on his face Caden Bunch has provided a lot of smiling moments for Cord this season let's enjoy another one this one worth 86 and a half points this kind of bowl for Caden Bunch is as easy as it gets. He's just gonna ride him with ridiculous ease, show off a little bit, but make no mistake, for a 20-year-old kid, he kept his composure about him, and he didn't go to showing off too much and put himself in the spot. Great ride to get the win for his team. Well, you saw Coach Cord McCoy saying, just like we drew it up, Aiden Bunch picks up his first career walk-off win. Tell me he's actually on the clock, but we could not see it. Well, we know that that eight-second clock has gotten all the way to the buzzer. And Sandro Batista has gotten on the board for the Outlaws. Uh, and I also, I love this, what we're seeing, because this is the first time I think we're really getting to see the true Sandro Batista. When he was at Carolina, he never had an opportunity to show his real personality. Now we're seeing it shine. We're starting to see it. And not only that, we're starting to see his ability. He's starting to ride different styles of buck and bulls. This bull was not that easy to ride. And right there, Glaramie Marchi knew it. This bull traveled out through there and had some momentum changes and what we call kind of double clutching until he come to spin. And, and he handled it with ridiculous ease. Batista gets it done for 87 and a quarter points. And now Kansas City part of the Missouri traveling with his brother. Let's see if he can get it done. And that's what Missouri needed. Briggs Madsen stepping up, stepping in and showing out here. And Luke Snyder with a smile on his face, but he's going to have to wait a couple of moments to really celebrate okay. because guys guess what surprise surprise they're going to take a look at it on the side right over here that other one right here oh he's a good boy yeah, it's a it's a ride guys it's saw ride. the enthusiasm of ross coleman there and now you see the celebration briggs Matson gets missouri on the board and it's a great one 87 and a quarter and guys just like that, we've got a tie game here. Yeah, and how exciting is that for Missouri? No one, you know, really gets on their side, and, and everyone kind of rides them off, especially when they're against a side just like Kansas City. But they're not going down without a fight, and, and, and you better believe that, that they're going to keep showing up week in and week out, and they're going to try and put uh, scores on the board. And, and Brig Matson has done exactly that all year, and, uh, you know, I'm very happy for this team because they are really trying to do the best for the team. Forward to having everybody back in Las Vegas. Bob Mitchell on I'm a Baller. Back to back, Bob Mitchell rides in Fort Worth, and Kansas City is loving the man with the million dollar mustache. Yeah, guys, and I'll tell you what, Scott, I think you and I have had this conversation over our careers before. You're only one bull ride away from changing your entire season around, and that confidence you've been looking for, it's one ride away, and Bob Mitchell has done exactly that. We're seeing a new Bob Mitchell on 
the back of Bulls uh, this weekend. And you see here on the Bass Pro Shops replay that he is not a chance to get on the ground. And that is a good thing to be happening when you're rolling into Las Vegas. Bob Mitchell looking good here, 84 and a quarter points. And he has two in a row here this weekend. Not only the defeat, but an absolute brutal beating. Compliments of Mike's magic. A little insult to injury here as we highlight this bull and watch what happens here. This bull's horn makes contact there with the, the helmet and then folds his head back over. That, that is scary, no matter how many times you've been around this sport. It's scary, but what it is is it's a testament to how athletic and how tough these bull riders are because he's getting a little help up, but he got up, walked out of the arena. In any other aspect of life, most people would still be laying there. His team stay in this. And the Madsen brothers get it done for the Missouri Thunder here tonight. Baby brother doing his part. There's a good look at big brother Briggs, who last season the Oklahoma Freedom drafted. Brandon Bates kind of pulling a rabbit out of the hat. Now Missouri benefiting from Briggs Madsen being a part of their roster. And what is Cade Madsen do 87 and three quarters. And in a must ride situation for Missouri to stay alive in this game. And these two brothers, and especially Cade at only 18 years of age, just keep impressing me because they keep putting him in, in these pressure situations. And every time he steps up and answers the call time and That's time again. About. And it's this is the highlight right now for Missouri. Don't get it twisted though, few people can handle those pressure situations. Make no mistake about it, Cassio Diaz is clockwork and he's chasing down Lemmy. And J.W. Hart is loving what Diaz is bringing to the table this season. What more can you say about him? Not only in the race for the MVP, but this is the guy that you want on your team when the game is on the line. He doesn't do anything wrong. He keeps his head down and just goes about his business and consistently wins games for Kansas City. Well, I can tell you this. What else can we say about him? He is our Stillhouse Unbreakable moment. Take a look at this. Tapped off, makes it look easy. Into his hand for 88 and a half points and keeps Kansas City's hopes of a regular season title alive with a victory over the Missouri Thunder. Hart and Marchi leading Diaz and crew. I think he can be a big contributor this tonight. JRV. And Joao shows out yet again, continuing to add more rides to his resume and getting his team the lead here in front of the hometown. And not just eight seconds, 88 and a quarter for JRV. 
big way to start off for the Rattlers. It is, and we mention it all the time that he's 39 years old, and we don't mention that to pick on him on his age. We mention that because how absolutely exceptional this guy is for what he's doing at this level for his age. Kansas City Outlaws might be the biggest Texas Rattler fans in the building here tonight. Some of the big moments he's had in his career. Trying to get another one aboard, legend. And unfortunately, Ezekiel Mitchell will end up on a highlight reel for that bull. Legend giving him the business and bringing Mitchell down in less than two and a half seconds. Take another look at it. This is the second time he's been on this bull. And getting you dirt level, showing you exactly how wild it is on the arena floor. Legend doesn't leave any room for mistakes. If you're going to ride that bull, everything has to be perfect. And in most cases, one little mistake from a bull rider, he makes you pay. Mitchell will replay that one in his mind until they meet again. And now... The Bullfighters doing everything they can. And in true Brady Randolph fashion, nothing comes easy. Brady Randolph has proven over the last two seasons to be one of the absolute toughest men in this league. And he just shows it again, 83 and a half points. But the celebration ensues because he just got the win for the Rattlers here. He did, and as we watch this ride back, not only was this a, a good ride because all the pressure was on the line to give him the win, what I like the most about it is right here when his hand hangs in the rope, he does such a good job of staying on his feet. As a bull rider, you don't just want to lay down and give up. You want to fight for everything you're worth, stay on your feet, Give them bullfighters an opportunity, and then you keep yourself out of danger. If you just lay down, you're going to get stepped on. He did a great job and comes out of this virtually unscathed where this could have been a bad wreck. What an incredible job by those bullfighters. All three of those guys working in unison and nothing else you can say. There's nothing else you can say about this man. He's matched up with Outlaw. Jose Vitor Lemmy is a monster. He is not human. Look at the tape on his helmet. Guys, we've seen the wreck multiple times tonight. To be able to come back from being knocked out in this arena, carried out on a backboard, and then to step back into the momentum of 89 and a quarter points, Jose Vitor Lemmy is a once-in-a-lifetime athlete. He's an absolute machine. Nothing seems to phase him. I just can't say enough of him. We're witnessing greatness right here. He truthfully is going to be one of the greatest of all times, if not already is. Brandon standing by with Jose. Jose, last night, very scary situation for all of us, and mainly you and your family. But to be able to come back, the reasoning for you getting on tonight, let us know what, why you, you had a choice to sit out, but why would you why would you have to get on? Man, honestly, to come back, it's always easier for me because it's another opportunity God is giving to me, you know, to leave and to do my job, to do what I love. And that's what I'm here for, do this job and bring happiness to my family, to my fans, and that's what I want to do. Well, congratulations, buddy, and thank you for leading, for example, a true MVP, Jose Vitor Lemmy. Brady Olson on smooth over it.
and take nothing away from Jose Vitor Lemmy. But the Texas Rattlers are the biggest story right now. They just put an exclamation point on what they want to do and what they want to accomplish. And it's no hidden secret. They are going to Vegas hot. 88 and a half points for Brady Olsen. And just like every other ride we see from Texas, look at the demeanor. Cool, calm, collected, almost robotic for these Rattlers. They treat this like a job every time. There's not one superstar on this team. They want each and every rider to be successful. They want to win as a team, and they're doing it. Look at Cody Lambert. He is loving what his Rattlers are giving him here this season, and especially this weekend. They're Young rider, veteran bull going head to head right here. A sneaky situation for eight in the freedom fly first against Kansas City and this is exactly what the Oklahoma freedom needed to do on paper they are not supposed to win this game but the, all the riders they don't know that it's jump for jump and now what they've done is they have put the pressure on Kansas City Kansas City can handle the pressure they've been in these situations but make no mistake it doesn't make it easier for them Scott Schiffner nobody told the Oklahoma sideline if that is the truth and on paper they're not supposed to win this game nobody has let these guys know and he gets 90 points for the effort let's go Sandro go they need him here Batista better stay in that Kansas City Outlaw uniform. Outlaws on the board. That is a huge ride for Kansas City because they had their backs against the wall. Oklahoma stepped up in a big, big way. Sandro Batista just answered and kept the Outlaws alive in this one. He's the same rider in two different uniforms, so the difference has got to be those guys, the coaches. It is. It's all about the team aspect and the support he has on the back of the bucket shoots and the belief he has from his team. That will fuel anybody's fire. He has to ride to keep Kansas City alive. A buck off, Lemmy's your MVP, Austin is number one. Casio Diaz is so amazing for the fact that we talk about other bull riders, how they have a strong direction or what bulls suit them. Every bull suits this guy. And I should rephrase that. He suits every bull in the draw. Guys, you want to talk about pure love of the sport? Look at the way he is limping away, and he continues to get on bulls to Brandon's point a moment ago. J.W. Hart's had to try to talk him out of getting on practice bulls on Monday mornings, on Tuesday mornings. He just absolutely loves this sport, and I promise you, those guys on the back of the bucket shoots love what he has done for this outlaw nation. Larry Marchi, J.W. Hart, instrumental in the success he's had in his debut season. And with that, 85 and a quarter awarded for the effort. So he pulls within 87 points of Lenny, keeps his hopes alive in the MVP standings. Everything you got, Jordy! Mean it! Go, Jordy! Go ahead, Jordy! Go ahead! Go ahead! Keep going! Keep going! Keep going, Jordy! Go, Jordy! Yes, sir! Jordy almost did it! The cheers are happening. The clock yes, stops at 7.8. I don't even think the team knows that. Yes. They are just so excited for the effort that he put forth. There was so many times throughout this ride that he had the opportunity and was in a bad position, but he kept putting forth the effort and the try, and that's what will end up getting you the whistle and scores on the board. <laughs> Oh, back it up. Oh, yeah, no, we're good. You never touch. Bing, oh, right here. No. Come around. Bam. Right. Go right here, right here. Go. You can make it. That's all bullshit. That's all bullshit. It's got some daylight in there. Oh, no, boy. we need to touch you. 
That's close. No. I can't call that. Go no. on, go. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Time's up. It's good. Keep going. Put your it's time's good, up. guys. It's yeah. good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Doherty dialed in for the Ridge Riders. And in Tets' yes, absence, sir. they get on the board and get the momentum. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 88 and a quarter, even though it's not his biggest score of the season, in a sense, that seems like his biggest ride. This is this is a great ride. But the thing is that I am so excited about is what it just did for the Arizona team on the back of the shoots. Now everybody's stepped up another notch, and this is going to filter down through the rest of their team, and they're going to be firing on all cylinders. And intensity is what's carried Arizona through season number one. That intensity is the only hope they have to help carry them through Las Vegas. To be completely honest, they've got to keep that momentum alive on the back of the bucket shoots and have that translate to their performance in the arena. Arizona less than two weeks before Come Vegas on, and if you go. need to find the time to get hot and start feeling everything about your team coming together this is the time they get to go home and reset for a week before Vegas and this is a team that's turning the page right now and yet another milestone for the veteran 90 points first 90 point ride for Parasito this season his 15th all-time in his career. But injuries have played such a crucial role. That is the Josh Frost that they picked up on draft day. Versatile, talented, tough. He's got all the tools to make the right moves for Carolina. Tiffany Davis just told us everything we need to know about how important that ride was. That's exactly right. And this ride was just as important for Josh. This isn't going to be the highest score Josh has ever got, but what's so important about this ride is as Matt touched base, when your confidence is down a little bit, all you need to do is hear the whistle. And not only did he hear the whistle, he also got it on a bull that's previously bucked him off, so that makes your confidence even that much higher. 86 and three quarters awarded for Frost's effort. Happy about that, but knows his team still has some ground to make up. Kimsey proving why, how, all of those gold buckles are engraved with his name. Qualified ride for Carolina. Will it be enough to take the lead? I'd say the champ looks healthy here today, guys. I don't think the wrist is an issue. The shoulder that he had surgery on earlier this season doesn't appear to be an issue. And confidence is never an issue with Sage Kimsey. 90 and a half. He does cross the 90 mark and picks up his third here in PBR teams this season, but not enough to take the lead. They've got to get one more ride. They have to, but what Sage has done right here is he switched the momentum over to Carolina and he's given them, them, them a chance. The thing is now, the score does not matter. If they can just hear the whistle one more time, they get the win. Four rides posted here. Would have many more if it wasn't for those injuries, surely. Of those four, three were 90s. He's only a quarter point away from posting only 90s in PBR teams. After that buck off last night, the fire was back and he's ready for today. Dalton loses the rope right at the whistle, spins to the dirt. It says qualified ride. They will definitely go back and make sure he was there for eight. Well, when I say that fire was back after last night's failed attempt, Dalton Castle was going to give it everything he had. And apparently, guys, that even means if he needs to keep riding without the rope in his hand, he's going to give it absolutely everything. 
Dalton Castle did not want to be denied here today. It looked close to eight in real time. What do you think now? I agree. In, in real time, absolutely, he made the whistle. The rope come out of the his hand come out of the rope right at the whistle. But as we can tell with these reviews, the time that they get and the sight they get, I'm done with guessing because I'm usually wrong. Give me one more right there. That's no score, guys. Seven, seven, nine. Heartbreak for Austin. No one has gotten past no cigar. Attaboy, don't do it! He's out of there! Attaboy, don't do it! Don't do it! Attaboy! 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 That could have been the eight seconds that gets the gamblers the title. Dos Santos on the board for Austin and one step closer to being crowned regular season champs. That seemed like just another bull ride that we've watched lots throughout this season. But in reality, that is a huge ride. Regardless of the numbers that come in, which are gonna be good, because this is an excellent bull ride. This, just like you said, Kate, could be the ride that seals the deal. His fourth of the season, but it's gotta be the most important. 88 and a half awarded for the effort. Michael Gaffney continuing to coach Adriano Salgado, who we'll see in a minute. You said earlier, Dos Santos didn't get that bull ridden the first time, but you had confidence he would this time. How happy are you with that? I'm just tickled to death, namely, namely for him first, because I know he was really disappointed about coming down, Matt. We knew we had to put him on the you know, the rematch, and uh, he just proved it right there. He was, the, he was the guy for the job. Great job, coach. Thanks, brother. Thanks. Bull just his second out of the season. And Andy aces this one. Last opportunity to get a qualified ride in the regular season, and he makes the most of it. Bull is on the board for Missouri. And look at the confidence oozing out of Andy Bull. That is exactly why we switched the lineup here today if you're the coaches for Missouri Thunder. Give guys like Andy an opportunity to step in and make something huge happen. Carry that confidence into Las Vegas. 88 and a quarter, so they will need another ride to take the lead. If you watch this ride right here, the thing that's so impressive is how patient Andy was in this ride. Had the opportunity that Bull kind of changed it changed gears a little bit and he just waited held his position really like good ride anyway. for the 23 year old could this be closer than anyone expected in the game that is everything for austin good go little brother but even superman can prove to be human at times. Unbelievable. That is a scenario right there that you would never think would happen. But the unique thing about bull riding is anything can happen. Austin still leads in the game. Lemmy still leads in the MVP race. Called up Lucas and here he is on Gold Creek. And in his PBR team's debut, he comes down early here. Souza just getting the call, and Cole Creek taking him down in just two seconds. And Brendan, we joked, I'll call it lightly, about you joining the Arizona squad, but Nashville actually almost needed you. Yeah, well, I was just back here talking to Justin McBride, and uh, I, I, I almost... I almost asked him, Kate, did he need me to get on one, but I knew better that he had actually seen my career towards the end, and I knew that I really had no chance of being part of this team. But it is amazing, honestly, all jokes aside, to stand back here and look at the injuries that they have standing on the back of the shoots and the quality of bull riders, it's absolutely amazing because they have got a star-studded and a talented team back here, but they are just plagued with injuries. But since his return, riding at 50%, he's aboard short circuit. Keep running! Keep running! Keep running! Keep running! Come on, Cody! The home team yeah. keeps their hopes alive, and they're on the board here inside Dickies. 
The thing that amazes me about Texas is they never seem to get rattled. We talked about it a little bit before where they maybe get a little bit flat, but they never get rattled. When they're backed into a corner, it doesn't matter which person in the lineup. For this example, it's Cody. They just go about their business. They don't get pressured and get the whistle. You're saying the rattlers never get rattled? That is exactly what Look I'm what saying. Look what you did there. Jesus awarded 89 and a half for that eight second dance. Great ride, Cody Jesus. You had your team telling you to get you started. I know that was a big one. How's it feel? Oh, it feels good. Just having fun riding bulls now. That's what it's all about for Texas. Have fun, do your job. Great job, Cody. Thanks, sir. Oh. Moody gets forward quickly. And after finding the whistle here on Friday, it's two buck offs in a row. He's had some big moments in his debut season, but the back-to-back -back rides are would have become very tough, not just for him, but rookies at this level in Electric Casio Diaz. It has. It, he's really been struggling. This is a kid with all the ability in the world, but stringing it together, and that's what separates the absolutely best from the guys that are just average. And it usually has nothing to do with their actual riding ability. It's all on their mental toughness and being able to deal with the ups and downs and stringing the consistency together. I saw Brady Olson so confident back in November and it came from his performance in teams. Keep going! Keep fighting! Keep riding! Keep riding! Keep riding! Olsen outlast Pickle Moonshine for the second time. And this time, it's to give Texas another ride. That puts Nashville in a must-ride situation. Texas is looking good. That momentum we're talking about, yeah, they've got it on that side. Yes, I, I almost feel uncomfortable over here on the back of the shoots for the Texas Rattlers. That was a great bull ride by Brady Olsen. And it's almost as if the team's just kind of giving him a golf clap. It is that serious back here. We've talked about consistency. It's across the board for Texas. Go on, go on, Sabato. Go on, Sabato. Keep going. Come on, come on, come on. It won't be enough to get the win for his team. But for Alves, finding a resurgence 15 years into his career, he is perfect here in Fort Worth to cap off the regular season. He really is, and this is the fourth time he's been on this bull. He's put up big numbers. The bull actually got him on the ground, just one of them three. Now he's rode him three out of four, and this is what he does. He just quietly goes about staying on bulls. We talked about that he's never the guy that gets the biggest scores, but he obviously rides the most as history dictates. I think there's a lot of significance with that ride too because going into Las Vegas, Silvano Alves just keeps the train on the tracks, if you will. And we know that when they got to Vegas a year ago, they were the Cinderella story. They came from behind. We'll see what happens. That is meshing and gelling the best of any team that I've watched. Ride! Keep riding! Keep riding! Keep riding! They're the marker of consistency in PBR teams. Randolph, oh, takes a shot, but it never matters. He's up on his feet to soak in the moment, and what a moment it is. With that, three rides in this game, nine rides on the weekend. They've got more rides than any other team right here in Fort Worth in three days. And not only that, they stay undefeated through the first three games in two years at home. Yes, all season long it's been two wins, a loss, two wins, a loss. Well, just before we get to Vegas, win, win, win. Do it for him. This team wants it equally as bad. But he's out of position. You saw just how sore and banged up Diaz was after his ride earlier in the night. He comes down here, and the Austin Gamblers, not only your regular season event for title winners, rather, but now Lemmy, your MVP, and lost for words because the emotion you're seeing on Lemmy, that's not typical. There's a lot going through his mind right now.
There is. There's a big sigh of relief right there. But make no mistake, he just won MVP. He did not want to win it that way. He wanted right. to win it by a dominating ride. But that's not how it played out. So he's still going to take it because it's well-deserved. It was a slugfest all season long between Lemmy and Diaz, and it all came down to this. A quick, uncharacteristic buck off for Diaz. It could be more right, guys. It has been such an entertaining back and forth between Jose Vitor Lemmy, and he's kind of overshadowed the production of Cassio Diaz at times because of who he is. You always want to end on a high note and carry that with you where you go. You better believe in Brady. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good job. Good job. That could be for the title. Texas will have to wait and see. Just a carbon copy of 24 hours ago. Last time he was 88 and a half points on this. And I think this is the same ride, maybe even better. He just does what he's been doing, getting the whistle. 88 and three quarters. That sets the standard. Uh, he, as stoic as possible, anything can happen. Oh, there's going to be some drama to this one. Kansas City wants to start the celebration, but the clock stopped just shy of four. If he gets it, is it big enough? This is the position where I would definitely not want to be a judge because this is a really good ride, but a totally different style of ride than what Brady made. So it's all who's looking and which one do you like better? So first, it has to be marked qualified ride. If it is, we'll find out the score. We want a re what we really want. That's not a slap. That's a ride, guys. No slap. W. Hart joking wants a re-ride. Not getting a rewrite, he is getting a qualified ride. With that said, he does not think it's enough to get the win. And that's exactly why they're joking about wanting a rewrite, is they want an opportunity because they feel they're not going to be marked as many points. It's in. 86 points. It's not enough. The home team takes it. The only team to win on their dirt in back-to-back -back seasons. The Rattlers rise in the final weekend of the regular season. And First of all, congratulations, Cody Lambert. It comes down to extra outs. You call him Brady Olson. He steps up, gets a big one right there. How happy are you with the performance of these guys, not just this weekend, but all season long? Well, we felt like uh, there were times that we didn't do everything we could, but We've got guys that are really capable, and I said it last night, it's really hard to pick which guys don't get to, to ride on a particular day because it's only five, and we feel like we got eight guys that can ride any kind of bull, so uh, we got to let a couple more of them ride today. We got seven of them out. Eli was ready for the next one, so we felt like uh, we had a chance, and, and uh, Daniel kind of got banged up last night, but he's ridden a lot of great bulls for us too. Kansas City's uh, definitely been the hardest team to beat, and they and our hat goes off to them. They've done a great job, and congratulations to Austin for winning the year. Something about being home that has truly been a home field advantage for the Texas Rattlers. Congratulations, Cody. Thank you. Taking a look at the PBR team's championship bracket. Austin, Kansas City have those buys. Arizona, Carolina play. Oklahoma, Nashville play. Texas and Missouri will play, and we will see you there inside T-Mobile Arena on Friday night, October 20th. All of that on CBS Sports Network. As Lambert said, congratulations to the Austin Gamblers. They are the number one team in the regular season. Texas Rattlers 
take it here at home. And Lemmy, he is your MVP of 2023 for the second year in a row. Well, that's a wrap from Rattler Days here in Texas. Make sure to tune in next Sunday for the Road to the PBR Teams Championship on CBS.